Hello, I'm Dr. Gary Gould, and welcome to today's workshop. Uh, we're going to be looking at lighting and interview uh, techniques that you can use uh, in your home setup. Now, I appreciate the fact that um, uh, everybody has different uh, uh, environments they have to do the interview in, and we'll have different levels of equipment, but I will gonna tr I'm going to try to keep this fairly basic. Uh, lighting is something that's a journey. You're going to get better at it as you get uh, as you do more of it. Um, and setting up for an interview, doing a Zoom interview is very different from doing a in-person live interview. Um, and sometimes we also can simulate live interviews through Zoom. But um, let's start by doing a Zoom interview. Now, one of the things that I spend a lot of time on is lighting. Uh, it's something I have a great love for because uh, I like painting. I like painting a lot. So this uh, picture over here, you can't, the lighting's not really good on it, but this is something I painted and really actually, uh, let's see if I can light it up because lighting is important and you can see the colors. And this is one of the things that lighting does for you. Oh, that's no, that's not going to work, but maybe now you get an idea. Adventure, exploration, and discovery. Three of my favorite words because uh, we begin with exploration. We start looking at something. Along the way, you find adventure and ultimately discovery. And that's what I hope that we get um, as we look at lighting uh, in general, but specifically lighting for interviews today. Uh, interviews are a critical part, a critical part of uh, storytelling. Uh, it allows a person to share a, a thought, a feeling, an emotion. Uh, some of the best interviews are one that aren't just giving facts, like, hello, I'm Dr. or I'm Gary Gould, I have a PhD. Uh, that's not nearly as interesting as, uh, hello, I'm Gary Gould, and uh, I don't know, something that's more emotional. Um, I can't even think of something. Uh, and I hate COVID. Maybe that's what it is. Uh, that's better, right? So um, you, can, you can share, if you're doing a voiceover, you can share factual information about me. Um, but emotional things or feelings and opinions should come from the person. And we find those in interviews. So um, you could say in a voiceover, uh, Gary Gould has a PhD in communication. Um, then you cut to a clip of me saying, I mean, it doesn't relate, but uh, you know, I, I really, um, as a communication major, I have struggled during COVID because I like to talk to people live and we're not able to do that as much uh, during the pandemic. You see the connection? So uh, factual information generally is not something that we would use uh, in an interview clip because it's, 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 you could say it much faster um, in a voiceover. Dr. Gary Gould, doom, 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 check, 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 check. Then you cut to the clip of something that only I can say as, as, as the person with the experience and the feelings, I feel this. Um, and when you're setting up an interview too, if you're using an interview in a documentary, you wouldn't say um, Dr. Gary Gould uh, is, is a teacher, whatever, is a university teacher, professor, whatever you want to call me. Um, he hates COVID. Then you cut to my clip and I say, I hate COVID right? It it's, doesn't make sense. So you want to make sure that the setup for the person is uh, relevant to, um, uh, it's, not, it's not redundant. It's, 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 it's relevant, but not redundant. So you might say, uh, Dr. Gary Gould is a university professor, and during COVID, he's, um, uh, he, he has mixed feelings about online teaching or something like that. Or uh, he says this, he says that he has mixed feelings. Uh, when you're doing a setup too, this is very, very important. Never say Dr. Gary Gould believes, you know, or thinks because you don't know. All you know is what I say. So be careful in your wording as well. Dr. Gary Gould says that COVID has been a struggle, right? Cut to the clip of me. And then I might say teaching online for the last year and a half has been a challenge for me, blah, 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 et cetera. Now, one of the things that I did do when I realized that we were going online to teach is I, as uh, you know, you may or may not know, I built this set in my mom's basement. So um, I went and bought this TV, put that there. Uh, actually, if I go to the wider shot, I put a bunch of cameras in here. I believe that's my wide camera. Uh, you can't see it in this shot, but you can see it in this shot here. This is my train set here, the train rail. So it runs around the top of the set, right? So I bought this $500 train set. There's actually two trains up there. I had a derailment and uh, I, you know, 
I'm in the process of fixing it. So by the way, it's, it's really expensive. This piece of track, it sells for like $6 a P or $10. Like it's, you know, and I got, I got, you know, six feet, uh, it's six feet by seven times two, two sets of tracks. So it adds up, but um, I just love trains. How, how beautiful is that? So I'm, it's still a work in progress and it's kind of a fun thing. So I try to bring some fun to it. Uh, but one of the things I also realized is the importance of lighting uh, and sound. Sound will be another discussion for another day. Um, actually, before I did this, uh, this video, the microphone that you see in the shot right here is an $800 microphone and I've got a preamp on it, but it wasn't working. So I spent probably 20 minutes trying to figure it out and I got it working, but I realized the important, I could have just said, well, forget it. I don't have time. Let's just go ahead and uh, um, just go without it. But the sound isn't any good. And uh, one of the things you learn as, a, as a, pro a professional is everything matters, lighting, sound, setup. Now, I want to talk to you about some easy pro things that you can do. I use the term easy pro, meaning professional techniques doesn't necessarily mean you have to use professional things. So uh, I think I've told you before, but behind me up there, I have that right there is a, uh, is a video light that's worth probably about 5,000 bucks. But I haven't used it for some time because I was, was using it when I started teaching, but it was blinding me, giving me headaches because I was staring at it for six hours. Um, and then I also realized too, uh, when I'm teaching lighting, it's kind of nice to teach with uh, some lights that you can you can recreate yourself. Now, the difference is these IKEA dial lights. I've got these on a, a, a remote control dimmer. Uh, these are fantastic. Uh, IKEA did not sponsor this video, but I'm there all the time. Um, and there's a couple of different lights that I have on uh, this uh, lighting system. And it's excellent. It's excellent. Uh, great place to go to get lights. Uh, one of the things I really like about their lights too, and I don't know if I can do it with this one. Let's see is they have these see this is like just a little flat light see how nice that is and it's all led so it's not hot but it's a nice low power really nice soft lighting uh one of the things we we're going to talk about is lighting color temperature uh the color in this isn't bad it's a lot of browns brownish kind of warm colors but that's the look i was going for you have some greens here in the screen behind me and the maasai shield the beautiful red and some green here from uh the country's flag um so I'm going to talk to you about uh, how to use a ring light, uh, how to set up for an interview, framing. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And uh, one of the great things I like about online teaching is I can actually show you because we're on a video camera. Uh, when I teach, I typically try to keep the shot to be medium close up, which means just about at my armpits. And then there's some headroom above my head. Uh, this is really important when you're shooting an interview. Sometimes people shoot interviews and they're uh, actually I'll show you with a wide camera because you get a better, better view of it. Uh, and it looks like uh, somebody's way back in the distance and I have a really small head. You see how large my torso is? And that's just not, <laughs> that's not just from chips during COVID. Uh, it just looks awkward. Like it's this really my tiny head with my big body, right? Uh, that's just everybody, all right? That has nothing to do with my size or weight. That's just my physical size. My torso is just larger than my head. So what's a more comfortable shot is to shoot tighter uh, get the camera in closer. Uh, which one do I like? This one's not bad. Okay. That's uh, this camera here. So armpits, um, I'm framing up my, my, my vest uh, just above my head. And actually I would probably tight it, tighten the shot up a little bit. Uh, you can shoot a little wider in Premiere Pro if you're using that as a software, uh, software for editing. A lot of software now you can zoom it in. So you just go ee! So once you're in the editing process, you can tweak it five, you know, five to seven percent. You don't want to go too close because you'll um, start to affect the resolution at a certain point. Um, but just above my head and armpits. And then my head size is pretty good. And ultimately, it's about my eyes, because during interviews, people are looking at your eyes. That's where they're looking. OK. All right, so let's talk about lighting and what we can do with it. You might say, hey, Doc, I don't have that setup you do, that beautiful uh, background, or maybe you don't like it, but I like it. That's what matters. Um, but I'm going to use it to show you. So um, when I do lighting, first of all, let's talk about lighting, and then I'll talk about sort of, um, uh, well, let's, like, let's talk about, because we're talking about framing. So let's finish up. I'll talk about framing. So framing, If here's the thing I like about shooting tight, right? It's easier to mic because the mic, I can just put it out of the frame there and it's still pretty good sound, right? But if I back up, the further I go away from the microphone, 
I assume it's the sound isn't as good, right? So why well, I assume I, I can't tell, but I'm back here. So if I'm way back here, the mic sound isn't going to be very good and people are not going to like it because they're listening through earbuds typically. Uh, the other thing is see how much headroom you have here and there's a huge amount of wasted space. And now my head is tiny and my eyes are tiny as well. So it doesn't take much to kind of move your subject in. Uh, so closer shooting is better for sound and it's way better for lighting because what you can't see, and I'll go back to the wide camera so you can see it, is just outside of the shot, I have this ring light. Now let's talk about the ring light for a bit. Uh, ring lights became popular a few years ago. Uh, they were starting to be, people were using them uh, successfully, I think, for documentary work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Ultimately, the ring light is designed, I think, as a product light. Now, I could be wrong, but that's just my impression because it's a very flat, even lighting. Now, in the, the way I've got it set up now, it isn't, but I'm going to just do a little demonstration. I'm going to grab a product. So I'm going to grab some, some Crayola glue, not sponsored, but I have some because it's good glue. Okay, so now you can see. Okay, so this is what the ring light will look like. Uh, also, too, just to just to note too, um, when you're doing interviews, make sure it's eye level. If you're doing a journalistic interview, eye level to the subject, not to you, but to the subject. Okay, if it's too much, too high, it looks like you're looking down on me. May I have some more soup, please? And if you go too low, I don't know how low this will go without coming off the mount, but you'll see it's up the nose, okay? So if you can see the person's nostrils, you're probably too low, all right? You can see my nostrils, but not bad. Did you ever think you'd hear the word nostril in a class? Maybe if you were a doctor, which I am, but not a physician. Okay, so I'm gonna try to set it up. And by the way, here's a, here's a, a selfie tip. If you're taking a selfie, the picture will look better if you shoot higher. Don't shoot low. Make sure the camera's just a little bit above your eye line. A little bit of a, a tip. And you do have a good side, so make sure you find your good side. Um, I happen to know that this is my better side. So if I'm doing a stand-up or if I'm talking to camera, generally, unless I'm teaching, I will stand with a slight uh, angle to my shoulders, which I think looks better. It looks better in the shot, I think. And then the framing, I would move it a little bit like this. So uh, that's not bad. So this is a ring light. Now, Doc, why don't you like ring lights? Actually, I love ring lights, but I don't like them around the camera, which is what they're actually designed for. The ring light, well, actually here, I got a whole bunch of ring lights over here. Here's a couple of them here. I got uh, another one here. Now these ring lights um, uh, do not have, typically with a ring light or often with a ring light, you'll get a mount right inside uh, the, 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 uh, the ring. The, the one that actually we're looking through, the one I'm looking at here, uh, the camera, I've just mounted it on the camera platform. There's a place to put the camera designed to go around the, um, the camera. Uh, again, it's great for product lighting. So if I'm going to do a Crayola, uh, it's going to be too bright. Uh, but anyways, it's super even. See how, ni see how nice and even that lighting is? There's no shadows. What else? Well, here, let's look at this artifact from England. Let's see. So let's say I'm at a museum and I'm going to take a picture of this artifact. This is a piece of tile from a home, a Roman home in Britain during the Romans time in, in, uh, in England. Uh, the UK. Uh, this was a piece of a roof uh, in, a, in a Roman home in England. Uh, there's some burn marks here. So it was actually the house they figure burned down. And this is a, a roof tile. But let's say I'm taking pictures for a museum. I want a nice even lighting, no shadows in the grooves. Excellent. Excellent. Ring lighting is fantastic because it's flat lighting. Now, it's, it's a bit overexposed because my camera is not doing a great job with the auto exposure. But you can see it's pretty good. And it's also, I'm too close. The focus range is, is too shallow in that camera. Uh, but you can do that with, any, with lots of things. So let's say I want this, I oh, no, this is gonna be, that's way too bright. Uh, what else? Oh, here's another piece I've got. This is a, um, an early Roman um, la a lamp, a little lamp, okay? So again, nice flat lighting. Resolution on that camera isn't fabulous because again, I don't know why, maybe that's only a, a 720p. Let me just take a quick look and see what the setting is. Always check your settings. I did earlier and um, it says HD, but anyways, maybe it's not enough light, but you can see some graininess in the picture. Uh, some of these other cameras are actually better, but I'm using this camera to demonstrate straight on flat lighting. So if you're lighting something, here's an actual badge from a movie called Harry Potter. Slytherin, can you see that, right? 
That's actually from the movie, right? Nice, even lighting, not a repro, an actual movie patch right there, right? Uh, it's excellent, great lighting. However, if you're actually sitting there being interviewed for 20 minutes, yeah. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm gonna ask you a bunch of questions. Uh, you getting the, the, anybody getting a headache, right? So the whole time you're staring at this basically headlamp uh, that is retinal burning. Not great, all right? Not great. Do professionals use ring lights? Of course they do. But uh, just because professionals use it doesn't mean it's right. And also too, just because I say it doesn't mean it right. it's right. A lot of it's just opinion. But personally, I don't like staring at a light when I'm being interviewed. I feel it's a little bit too much like you're interrogating somebody. And I also don't like flat lighting, right? Because flat lighting is great if I'm doing makeup or shaving or something, right? You can, you can start to see the, the, the COVID growth, right? It's pretty, pretty good that way. But, but a ring light is actually better if you offset it. So what I'm gonna do is here. And what does that mean? What does that mean? Okay, so offsetting the light means, uh, all right, so I'm gonna put it off to the side. So my camera is here, right there. And my, it's about 30 degrees off the axis. So here's the camera looking at me, 30 degrees over, and I'm gonna raise it up a little bit. 40 degrees, 45 degrees down angle. Gives me some shadowing on the face, which I think looks better. And not only that, I'm not, it's not in my field of view. So it's in my peripheral vision. So it's not nearly as uh, unpleasant to look at it. So um, when you're lighting either yourself or someone else, just because the ring light has the mount in the middle doesn't mean it's right, right? So you can see this one here. See, there's a, there's a mount flood right here, right? No, it's not very good, but you get the gist, right? And if you've seen ring lights, you'll know it. But just because there's a mount in the middle doesn't mean you have to use it. Uh, I like to offset stuff. Okay, so the ring light, uh, and actually let me do, the, the other thing with lighting is when you're doing any kind of lighting, I like to start from zero and add lights rather than try to subtract lights. And <clears throat> before I actually even talk about that, I also, before I do anything, I uh, look at the subject. So the person shows up. If I have a, ch a choice, like if I'm talking to somebody before and I know I'm going to do an interview with somebody, or if I know I'm going to be on television, I will never wear white or black. All right, solid black or solid white. Now, uh, why is that? Because this is not solid white, but look at how the, look at how the camera is all blowing out on this uh, Greek statue. It can't get the detail. <clears throat> because the um, anything that's white reflects too much of the light back and the camera just can't handle that. So I just know that. Mid-tone colors are better, right? This is a beautiful red. One of the things I love about this, other than the fact it was a, it was a, a gift from, um, from a student, um, is, the, is the beautiful colors of the flag, the green, the red, right? Lovely, lovely colors, right? Uh, plus it's handmade and it's, uh, it has significance to me. I, I appreciate it. Uh, uh, people that make things, crafts, right? And that's what we do with, with television and film. We make things yeah, for display, like as this is on display. Um, and so uh, what I will do is I will uh, try to make the background complement the foreground. So um, if somebody is wearing a high intensity color, say a bright red or a green, um, what I will do is I will um, try to make the, find a background that's a bit more muted so they stand out against it. What you don't want to do is you don't want to uh, have a color that matches the background. So let's see my hair. So that door, if you look at the door, see how my hair kind of is the same color, kind of blends in. Uh, not great, right? Not great. And actually, let me show you. Well, uh, well, what the heck? I'm doing it now. I'll show you my backlighting. Uh, I've actually got extra light going on here so that if you look, see how I've got a, a light up here? I'm using that light up there to, to, to try to put some color and light in my hair and separate me from the background, all right? But still the color is very, actually that's actually a better match there. Um, so try to, try to make the, the easy way, the easy pro way of doing stuff is just if someone has a black shirt or top, don't put them in front of a black background or a dark background. If they have a light top, don't put them in front of, a light background, right? Uh, here, cat making a funny noise. Um, what is that noise? 
sorry, uh, audio is very important. I'm in my mom's uh, basement with the studio and her cat is making a very, very funny noise. I think it's okay. Okay. Uh, but that's the thing. So we're doing an interview. We're doing something. You hear sounds, you stop, right? So if I was interviewing somebody and I heard this, this cat making a noise, uh, it's being picked up by the microphone. I can hear it through the headsets. Always wear headphones when you're recording. Um, I would say... I just need to pause while the, you know, while the cat finishes meowing and or whatever, there's a train going by or a boat or something or a truck, wait till the sound goes by, stop and then re-ask the question and pick it up again. Very, very important, just little things. Um, but when I'm setting up for a, an interview, I'm going to try to uh, look at what the person is wearing. I look at um, hair color, hair coverings or head coverings. I look at um, any kind of uh, um, the, uh, basically a top or outfit that somebody's wearing and I try to put them against the background that they will stand out against, not blend into, before I do anything. Um, and then if, you, if I have limited options, let's say somebody set up, let's say you're doing a Zoom e e uh, interview with them and they're on their computer, then um, if it's a desktop, you can't really move it. And you're just sort of stuck with the background behind you, but you can maybe say, do you mind turning off the overhead light? Or do you have a desk lamp that you can put beside your, your computer that might help? just so that they, uh, the lighting looks better. Uh, what I look for when I'm lighting, I look for two things. I look for shadows and I look for hot spots. So sh they're kind of almost opposite. So if you look at this shot here, we have some shadows here on my chin and the hot spots are coming off these lights right here, up, up here and off this uh, ductwork is I got a light here. Your eye is gonna be tr attracted to the brightest thing in the screen. In this case, it's going to be what's behind my head over here. And um, this, this TV, um, I actually, uh, um, it actually has a covering on it because look how bright it is without the covering. The, the, the camera cannot, hand, and that's set to the darkest mode on my TV. I go all the way dark and that's what I get. So I've got this thing here, look at that. It's sunglasses for the camera. It's neutral density, but it's today it's sunglasses for my television. Actually, it's sunglasses for the light. Normally we put it on the light, but by putting it on the TV, uh, you can sort of see some of the color, the detail comes back. Uh, if you have a choice between overexposed and underexposed, always pick under because overexposed, the detail is lost. But that's a, that's a side note. But what I'm going to do when I do lighting is I like to subtract all the lights first, and then I will add lighting. So let me do that uh, with the help of my remote controls. I'm going to, and I appreciate you don't have remote controls and I don't expect you to. I'm just going to use them for this demonstration. So right now, the only light I've got going on is the ring light. What has happened when I turned off the light, the camera is not really sure what to do, but see how this part of my face is all overexposed. That's because it's, it's coming in on my face like this. And my automatic uh, camera here isn't doing a very good job. Let me try this other camera. Uh, it's a little bit better quality, I think. Let's see if that's eh, colors off, but uh, that's okay. Right. Uh, okay. So now you can see the shadow on my face. Yeah. One of the things that's a really critical thing to remember, this is just an easy, easy pro way of doing it. Never, ever, ever put your subject too close to the background because you're going to get a lot of, see the shadow here, right? If the subject is too close to the background, you're going to get subject and see how I'm blending right in. That's the problem. Actually, let me show you what the backlight will do. So in pro lighting, we use three lights. We use a key light, a main light, a fill light to fill in some of these shadows, which I'm going to show you how to do with your own stuff. And then a backlight to separate me from the background. See that? All right, see how that just, uh, ignore what's going on up there. But, uh, and again, my hair color is, I think, too close to the wood color. So it's not ideal. But the thing is, uh, see the shadow here? If I move my subject up, in this case, the, sh the shadow is kind of lost, but, but you don't really see an outline of a shadow. It's just a bunch of darkness. Uh, speaking of darkness, oh, there it is there. Does that still work? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, okay, so I've got a, a, a light here. Let me go to the wide shot so you get a better sense of what I'm doing. You can see uh, this ring light's coming here. I'm going to raise it up a little bit higher, again, about a 45 degree down angle to, my, to, to the subject. And then we've got this dark shadow. Of, oh, well, look at that. Look what happens when my hand goes past my face. We've got a dark shadow but my skin is reflecting the light onto my face. So if you have, say, a piece of whiteboard, which I happen to have right here, watch what I can do with that. Look at that. Wow, now it's not too bad. 
This is why you don't shoot wide though, right? Because in the wide shot, and you see the lights. In the close shot, you will not. So this is the thing. I'm just gonna show you one other uh, board. This board I got at uh, the dollar store. Uh, the better board, if you're going out looking, is this board. It's actually designed as a project board. This is from Dollar Tree in Burlington, right? A buck 50, I think I paid for it. It's a project display board. I think it's even, I think it's made in America or Canada or something, but inside it's white. Outside is uh, this uh, cardboard color. So it's great. If you're moving it around, you're protecting the white. It's not getting dirty. It's a bit stronger than foam board. You can see my, I don't know if you can see the foam board starting to get all bent and smashed up out of shape. This is a stronger board I found. And more importantly to me, it's larger. And then more importantly too, because it's this trifold design, I can actually set it up and it'll stand on its own. I can actually probably just show you right here. Like it's, it's pretty great, right? As things fall, but I can, it can stand on its own. Now, actually, let's go back to the other shot over, let's try the, this one, the Nexago camera. Uh, no, that's, the, let's go to a tighter shot to this one right here. Okay, so it's still in the shot, uh, but I can play with that, but this is self-standing. So uh, I'm doing it by myself. So I'm gonna just remove this. I have lots of little bits and pieces. Okay, so see the light shadow here? If I bring this up, now oh, is that doing anything? Uh, you know what, for, for the sake of space, because we're in a very tight space, I'm just going to use this other piece of foam board. It'll demonstrate things easier. See the dark shadow? You see that? Okay. And, and the project board works the same. Uh, you're going to have more space because you're going to be in your living room or dining room. But um, if I actually, let me do it this way. Beautiful, right? So I can actually set this up. And what you, what you will learn with lighting is we don't want flat lighting, which is if we did, we use the ring light straight on. And what flat lighting is, it's when the light is the same all across the face. Now, shadowy lighting, let's go back to my Roman artifact. All right, so uh, now there's shadows in the groove. That's not what we want. If we're doing museum pictures, we, well, maybe you want it, I don't know, but it's more dramatic, right? And it's, it's also more realistic. And uh, never in life do you have a light straight at your face except if you're uh, out and there's a, a car coming towards you, or maybe if you're doing makeup in the morning, or if you're in the bathroom and you got a good bathroom light and the light's coming kind of, but, but my, my light's above me. It's never straight on me for my, in my bathroom light, like it's above the mirror, right? So there's some shadows under my chin. So um, the problem for me is that um, ring lights, when they're used around the camera, just look way too artificial. And they're, whoa, look at that. And really, really retinal burning blindingly bright. Now you can dial them down, right? This is the beautiful thing with these, right? You can, you can knock them down a lot. But again, do you want to stare at that for half an hour, right? So here it is around my, you think, but Gary looks pretty good. But it doesn't look natural. It looks weird right? It doesn't look natural. Well, you can see the difference. Here's flat lighting. And this is more dramatic, right? It's fantastic. I'm the man from Dos Equis, right? And now I don't know what I am, right? See how flat that lighting is, right? And also, hey, Gary, did I just see a big reflection on your glasses disappear? <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Right? So now it looks like you think, where is that person, right? Let's say I'm talking with my glasses and I look like I'm at some Disney event, right? With all these circles, is there, is, is, that, is he at a light show? Where is he? And people will think that and they'll, it'll distract them from the story, all right? Uh, there you go, you tell me, what do you like better? Now, again, the resolution on this camera, I, I thought it was a 1080p camera, but it might only be running 720. So I think that may be why the resolution isn't as sharp. Um, so again, these things matter. Understanding technology, 720p, of course, is not as good as 1080p. Uh, I have a 2K camera and I also, uh, I was looking at 4K cameras, but they're just really expensive. Um, okay, so this light here is gonna be my main light and then I'm gonna use a board to fill in the light. Now, uh, a ring light, you can put it on a light stand. Um, this is a light stand. This is not called a tripod. A tripod is what this is. Okay, this has three legs and a, and a head that you can adjust. Uh, this one has, uh, oh, and the other thing you can do with a tripod is you, you can actually turn this around like this, this moves around. The lighting stand, you can make, like it has, I guess, three legs technically. 
uh, but it, it doesn't have a, a pivot head on it. So the light stand is what I would use to mount my uh, ring light on um, and the screw head should screw. Well, let's actually look. Let's put our money where our mouth. Actually, I got a ring light right here. I clearly like ring lights. I have about, I don't know, five of them. Let's see if that actually fits. It may not, but maybe it will. It looks like it's gonna fit. Yeah, look at that. It just screws onto the top there. Complete, complete zoom collapse uh, as I was trying to show you this. Uh, the problem I believe is uh, I have too many cameras plugged into a USB outboard box and zoom just sometimes it goes crazy. I think the other problem was this light was attached to the outboard box and um, anyways, it shorted the whole thing out. I think we're back up. What I was just saying is the uh, the light, the zoom light does have a, a lighting screw mount on the bottom. You can just uh, put it on a light stand. And again, just remember your lights should be above your subject, typically when you're doing uh, news and documentary lighting. Uh, low angle lighting, which you can certainly do, is much more dramatic, which I can show you here. Let me dial down the light. I do like that you can control the light. And you can see it's got a very different look. Uh, actually, let me turn off the backlight so you can get a better sense of how this is. All right. Uh, yeah, so much more dramatic uh, side lighting, right? Then you get your Rembrandt lighting where you get the triangle here, higher. Right? See how the shadows move on my face? But again, I don't really like flat lighting. I just think it looks artificial and more like a passport. This is the kind of lighting if you get for like a passport photo or an ID picture, right? Um, very, very um, sterile. I don't like sterile. Like a bit of a uh, little edge and you can see too, the reflection in people's glasses are better if you're off uh, setting your light. Okay, so uh, sound, we'll talk about another time. I believe my mic is still working. I think we're good. Uh, so what can you do with some of the lights that you might have available to you? The ring light. I remember too, there's different colors that you can change. Uh, actually, this one I can't change. This is just a preset light color, but this ring light, I know I can. It has more options. Uh, uh, let's see, red, green, blue. You can see I can change the color, very dramatic. Uh, the camera is probably just going, ah, actually, let me switch to the Nexigo camera. And I hope it doesn't crash the whole thing. I don't think it will. Uh, there it is there. See that that's really picking up on the red. You can change the color. Some of this color you just cannot correct later on. I'm going to go back to this mode and I can shift the color to try to make it a bit more natural. That's actually not bad. That's a bluish light. This is more of a warm light. Uh, typically skin tone does better with a warmer light. Remember there's different color temperatures. You have uh, 3,200 degrees Kelvin, which is a very reddish light. This is a bluer light. So this is more like 5,600 degrees Kelvin. And one of the things you wanna do is you wanna to try to match the color of your light. So because I know that's a bit of a bluer light, uh, this is gonna be actually pretty good. It looks pretty fantastic, come to think of it. But this light color matches the light color over there. Um, and you get a pretty nice light. Uh, this light, you don't want, again, we don't like flat lighting. So one light should be a little brighter than the other. And the way you can do that is just move the light. See, by moving it forward or backwards, I can change the intensity of the light. There's a few things we look at when we do lighting. One is the direction of lighting. Uh, what, which way it's hitting the person's face. And we can tell that by looking at the shadows, we look at the intensity of the lighting. What's the lighting uh, like level up or down? Uh, harder soft lighting. Uh, this is fairly soft. You can see the shadows in the background are pretty soft. Um, anything that's diffuse lighting is a nice soft lighting. Anything that is a, a direct lighting, uh, direct lighting is a very hard light. Actually, I'm just gonna plug this in and show you, but I'm afraid the zoom will crash again. But direct light is something with a lot of, this is a soft light. So you see shadows, but they're softer shadows. Uh, actually, I can show you with this light. This light here, <clears throat> this is something I got again. At, this is just from Lowe's for 12 bucks. Uh, this light's been around for 100, well, not 100 years, but my dad had almost the exact same light in the 60s. So they've been around forever. But direct lighting is a lot harder shadows. Uh, you can see behind me, see the shadows behind me. Uh, very hard lighting, uh, very dramatic. Used uh, Hollywood loves dramatic lighting. Um, I actually really like that clamp light. It's a great light for 12 bucks. Um, and then uh, I just buy a light bulb that is, if you, when you buy light bulbs, look at the package, it will tell you 
in my adventure locker, I believe I have a light bulb here somewhere. Um, well, here's some here. Yeah, these are smaller light bulbs, but but on the package, you can't see the lighting is so bad here. Let's turn this on. Look at this, beautiful. Let's do some product lighting. Uh, can you read 2,700 degrees? Oops, are we still recording? Uh, yeah, so if you look here, right at my finger, let's dial the light down a little bit. 2,700 degrees Kelvin. I know that's a very reddish light. Uh, uh, they sell light bulbs as warm light bulbs. If you look, it'll be 2,700 degrees Kelvin to about 3,200 degrees Kelvin, C-K-E-L-V-I-N, you see that? Uh, and the blue light is about 5,600 degrees Kelvin right there. And it's a very different color. This is more of a blue light I've got going on here and actually looks pretty good. So if I was to change this other light over here, my main light to, let's change it to um, more of a red light. Okay, so now the lights don't match. So you don't get quite the same color. I don't know how good your monitor is, but this color, it doesn't quite look right. See how it looks kind of off? And that was the problem is I was mixing my light colors. Uh, so you wanna try to match them up. And that's the match right there. Okay, so you're gonna get better lighting. And when you're doing your lighting, you got a main light. This is very dramatic. Uh, you can certainly do interviews like this if you wish. Uh, again, I would suggest if you're going to do an interview with one light, you use some kind of a soft bounce light. That's why tighter shots are better. And if your phone has multiple cameras on the back of it, uh, the best one is the longer lens, like zoom it in, use the zoom lens. Don't do the squeeze zoom, but if you have an optical built-in lens, back up your camera and go to two times or three times zoom, and you're going to find that the picture actually just looks a lot better. All right. So I think that looks pretty good. Again, I'm going to put this up higher. So this light, actually, let me go to the wide shot so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to put it a uh, 45 degree down angle, 30 degrees off the axis. So it's going to be up here. This is a smaller light. I can also adjust the light level on this. I don't want it to be quite as bright. I want, I want some shadows. Do you see how there's more shadows now in my face? If I turn it on up, it's going to be, again, oops, that's too much. It's going to be a little flat lighting. We don't want flat lighting. We want a little bit of, look at that. See how just by moving it just that little bit gets you that nice little uh, bit of character to your lighting. Makes it a bit more realistic. Right. Nobody wants to think they're interviewing a Campbell soup cam because it's uh, it's perfectly lit. OK, so that's the, the light you're seeing here is just that ring light. And this light here, this is an extra light. And if you don't have this, if you have, say, um, a battery operated uh, light, this, the panel light, uh, believe the if you're using the battery operated panel light, it's fifty five hundred degrees Kelvin. So that's bluish, that's gonna match the, this uh, ring light here. And I can use this as well. Um, a lot of lights have the mount in the bottom. This one does as well. This is just a little panel light that I can use to uh, fill in the light. But again, I can just use the second light. Or actually, if you want dramatic lighting, you can use the, um, just the key light. All right, so let's go back to this camera here. Uh, medium close up, fairly tight. Watch for things like this. This is from Alaska. That is a, um, I don't remember the name of it, but it's a um, cutting blade that they have. So, but it's steel. I wanna say Ulu, I think it's an Ulu knife. I think that's what they call it. But now you can't see it. It's, it's I turn it, so I'm, I'm proactive with my environment. Um, do I want this in the background? Let me actually turn that off just so you can see, uh, just to be fair, so you can see what um, this looks like. If I was in my, let's say I was just in my apartment and I had no TV behind me, um, I got a lot of shadows, try to move the subject away. I have a very tight space here, so uh, I'm limited how far I can move out. But what I can do is I can add a light behind me. I'm just going to use the ring light for this, but I can use any light. Well, here, I'll show you. So here's a, here's a, here's a battery operated uh, light. I can use this behind me to punch up some of the some of the color. The problem, here's the thing with light. Light activates the color. So you see the red in the Maasai shield here is fine, but as I put more light on it, you get more red. See that? Punchier, right? And the green really comes out. See that? That doesn't look, that looks really dark until you hit it with light. So um, what I can do with this little light 
Again, you can dial the temperature up and down on, or the, the temperature, the volume. And sometimes you can change the color temperature. Try to match the color temperature unless you want kind of a bluish look. Uh, somewhere I have, it's so dark here, I can't see. I have lighting gels that I use to cover over um, my lights to add color. I can put blue or different colors on them. Um, but this light, I can do it two ways. You can't really see here. This is a metal duct. I can actually stick it on, that's magnetic. So uh, I have to lower myself down, but I could, and it's probably too bright. I think there's another level of brightness here. Is that going up or down? I can't tell. I could use something like that to throw a backlight. It's too bright, so I'd have to dial it down. This is an LED light, so I could actually, if I wanted to, I like to carry tissue around with me. Normally I have tissue here. I can use some just, just tissue to cover the light to knock the light level down. So if you wanna knock the intensity of a light down, um, I can fold over tissue and run my light through tissue and that will remove quite a bit of the, see the brightness level change, okay? The color change is because it's, it's, it's going through my fingers. So it's picking up the, the color of my, of my skin. Um, but a piece of any just Kleenex, because this light doesn't run hot, you can do that. So I sometimes adjust the brightness that way. But, but you're just improvising, Doc. That's what pros do. That's what pros do, right? You think, okay, well, what do I got? What do I have? What's interesting? That's why in my, my setup here, I wanted to light some of the stuff going on up here, which is why I put a light there, but you won't have that. It would be more like this and it's kind of flat. You need something behind the person. Uh, what I would do with two lights is I would use this light probably behind. Uh, again, if it's too bright, if I can't dial down the, the brightness, I would use tissue or Kleenex or paper towel, something that's actually white. Because uh, if you use like a yellow Kleenex, it, it will throw yellow. It'll add yellow color to the um, to the light. You can put it on the ground. If I just put it right down on the ground right behind me, I can't see if that did anything. But let's actually cover it up with my foot. Yeah, see, see what it's doing. It's bringing up. It's bringing up some light up here, right? And now that dark piece of wood's lighter. Good lighting is unnoticeable. Lighting is very much like editing. If you do a great job editing, people will not notice it. If you do a great job lighting, people will not notice it as well. So what I might do in this case is drop that light on the floor, use this little board here, right? Doesn't do much, but you don't need much. Just a little kicker, right? Fill in some of the shadows. So there's some still some really nice model lighting on my face. Hard shadow under my chin, don't love that, right? Um, but... Uh, ultimately people are going to be looking at my eyes. So watch for stuff like that. I look at the, where the shadow falls and that helps me determine the direction of the light. So direction, intensity, softness, um, uh, or, um, is it so soft or hard light? The, um, the light can be something, uh, that you, um, that can make hard or soft. And then the color of the light. So a blue light is what we get outside. Typically during the day, morning, evening, it's more red. Um, just know your color temperatures, warm lighting, 3,200 degrees Kelvin, 2,700 degrees Kelvin, and cool lighting is more in the five to 6,000 Kelvin range. And it's a very different look, but you can, you can, like I said, you can match them up. So they look pretty good. Um, okay. So that's, that's sort of the five cent tour of lighting, uh, framing for an interview. Again, I'm going to frame fairly close, medium close up. If I'm doing a Zoom interview, it's, it's it, listen, we all know it's not ideal. Um, it really is not. Um, let's say the person you're talking to says, I don't have a ring light, I have nothing. A desk lamp, and actually I told you my desk lamp is broken. So what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this to show you. This is just a regular light bulb, okay? It's an LED light bulb, so it doesn't run hot. I bought this for buck 29, I don't know, 50 cents. I don't know, Ikea sells them, but you can get them at the dollar store as well. Try to find the one with a warm color. Look at the color temperature when you buy them. This is about 2,700, 3,000 degrees Kelvin. So I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna pretend this is a desk lamp, okay? So just a normal bulb that anybody would have in a desk lamp. My absolute uh, favorite light, and I just bought another one at Ikea, is this thing here. Uh, again, not sponsored at all by Ikea unless they wanna send me stuff, but they don't. So <clears throat> this Lurkstar, however you say it, this is the best light I've ever had. It's, this was 10 bucks, but it's normally 20. Still, I I've paid 20 for this many, many times. I bought many of them. It's a, it's a floor stand light. It's got a gooseneck arm, so you can 
bend it and bounce it off the ceiling. You can bounce it off a piece of board. It's absolutely fantastic. It's got an on off switch here. This light's been around for 25 years. It's actually, this light is actually in the original Santa Claus when uh, Charlie's going to bed, his dad turns off the light. If you look, it's this lamp. They've been making it forever. And the price has always been around 10 or uh, 20, 20 bucks. So it's a, it's a great deal. Um, highly recommend that light if you're looking. And actually, then it's just a great life light. Let's say you're doing a puzzle on a table. You need an extra light. You bring it over. It's on a light stand. Boom, you're cutting a pumpkin. You need some more light. You're reading a book. You want to move it by. It's just the great light. Again, not sponsored by IKEA. I buy them with my own money. Okay, so um, light bulb. Pretend this is a desk lamp. Again, mine broke. But what I'm going to basically do is I'm going to aim the desk lamp at if somebody has a white wall behind them, or if they have this white piece of fo foam board would be even better. But let's say they just say they have a white wall behind their computer. I can actually show you on the high camera uh, how we're going to do this. Okay, so what I'm going to do? Let's pretend. This is here. Can you see what I'm doing? So let's pretend this is the wall. Uh, this is not going to work. Too, you're not going to see too much from that angle. But uh, let's go back to. I think the only camera we can use is this one. Okay. So now I've got this set up here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that that's just my wall, and this is what I've got as a desk lamp. So it's sitting on my desk. I'm gonna aim the desk lamp towards this white piece of paper. And uh, let's see what we got. I'm gonna actually turn off the ring light, okay? That's off. Okay, so that's actually just the backlight on the floor, but let's turn this on and the, the camera will white balance. And then I'm just gonna move it around. I'm kind of dialing the light. I'm changing the intensity of the light by moving it and aiming it. So it's just catching the edge of it. But see, if you move it around, see how it's adjusting the light? You just play with it till you get it. And it's actually pretty good. And what you're looking at is the lighting in the eyes. Make sure there's no shadows. What you don't want is like hard lighting. See all the shadows on my face. I'm gonna bring it around. All right, so direction of light uh, affects the direction of the shadows. See how low we're playing. Oops, we're hitting stuff on the ceiling. All right, so that's how you do it. Just kind of move the light around. Uh, the key is to have light uh, towards a person's face and diffused lighting, I think is much more uh, enjoyable to sit under than direct lighting, right? Direct lighting is really unpleasant. Bounce lighting is great. And it actually makes the person, I think, look better. All right, let's turn that back on. Oh, you can also see the color difference, right? See that? See, this is very blue. This is very red. And then the camera, uh, cameras don't know how to auto white balance that. It throws them off. So try to match the color up. That's just a simple pro tip. Hey, this is a warm bulb, but that's a blue cold bulb, right? So I would actually... In this case, again, change the light to match something warmer. So that's a match there, right? right? That's not a match. That's one is blue, one is reddish. And you wanna dial in the same color right there like that. Pro level lights like the one I have over there actually has the color temperature on a, on a dial. So you can just set it to 3200 or whatever. You can actually dial in the color light if you want. Oops, sorry about that. Um, and the other thing I can do with this clamp light that I love is I can just bounce it off the ceiling, right? And then I can play with the light that way. That's the other thing I can do. So uh, I'll show you what it does. When I'm trying to do lights, I, what I'll do is I'll turn the light on and off and see how it affects my picture. It's not bad. That's pretty good at all. That's pretty good. The other thing you could do, so let's say you have a, the field light uh, is blue. Okay, so it's 5,500 degrees Kelvin. So then all I need to do is instead of buying the warm light bulb, buy the blue light bulb, buy the cold one, right? Again, Dollarama, Dollar, I don't think Dollar, maybe Dollar Tree does, but I know uh, Ikea, I just bought some LED light bulbs for buck and a quarter, buck 29. Uh, just get a blue one and then you match them up. The key is to find out what your light is doing. And if I'm inside and I'm using window light, let's say I have a window coming in, again, watch side lighting, try to have the light towards the person's face, although, Offsetting at an angle is better than straight on lighting. Um, and window light's gonna be very blue. So then try to match it with your blue, um, you know, your, your, uh, your blue light, your, your, um, your blue uh, battery operated light. Um, you can always change the color of lights by adding a gel. If the, if the light is um, 5,600 degrees Kelvin, it's a very blue light. You can add an orange gel, something we call CTO, color temperature orange CTO gel. 
you put that, I have something, some, some of it here somewhere, but it's just a piece of plastic that's colored, uh, but it's lighting gel, so it doesn't burn, it's, it melts if it gets hot. And so CT uh, orange goes on a blue light and you can put color temperature gels over lights to change the color. So if it's a blue light, 5,600 degrees Kelvin, bluish, you can put color temperature orange on it. And if it's an orange light and you wanna match a daylight color, um, inside we sometimes call tungsten lighting. Uh, I can put CTB on it, color temperature blue, and the CTB gel will change the orangish reddish light to outdoor light. So that's how we can do that. Um, in some studios, they'll actually cover a whole window with CTO, color temperature orange, to make the outdoor light. Let's say you're doing a talk show, they're using indoor warm lighting, color temperature orange on the window so that it looks like normal color outside to correct the blue in the shot. Okay, so that's some things you can do with lighting. In terms of your framing, just your composition, it's very, very important when you're doing framing uh, in real life, you have control. When you're doing framing in Zoom, you have to tell the person what you want. Uh, too far back is a problem. Being proactive is going to be very helpful to you, I think. Uh, do you mind tilting your camera up? Can you move this way? Can you move that way? Um, at some point, um, you'll see Zoom interviews that are done kind of pseudo a simulated real interview. Because in, in real life, what I would do is I'd frame my one person looking this way, right? Probably, hmm, you want to see both eyes. So you don't want to do a profile. That's okay. So you would maybe frame it like this. This is pretty good, right? Move it over like this. I'm talking to the reporter who's over here. I'm talking to the reporter. So I'm talking like this. And then the other shot, the reverse shot would be the reporter, but they're looking this way, right? And again, they're looking kind of just off the camera. So you see both eyes and nose and mouth, never this way, this way. Zoom, it's very, very, uh, it's very difficult to do that kind of an interview. Um, but so here, what we wanna do is just is to do a Zoom interview, just have them looking into the camera, which is right there. Uh, now I've got, what you can't see is I have my computer, on a bunch of stands here. Again, this is an Ikea shoe stand. Uh, this is uh, some kind of a foot, foot rest, uh, but anything works. A bunch of books, you know, uh, an old box of some Kleenex boxes uh, is very important for the eye line. This is super easy to do. Just raise the computer up so that the, the camera is eye level. If, if the camera is built into a, um, a desktop, like an iMac or a, a PC, typically you're pretty good because uh, the monitor is fairly high and people are sitting down and it's not bad. It's pretty good. But with, with a laptop, they usually have it on their desk. And so you get this sort of low, uh, low angle shot. Typically it's, it's sort of down one of these things. The easiest thing, if you do nothing else, just say to the person, you know, you'll look fabulous. If we can just make the, can you just raise your laptop up for me? Um, bunch of books, right? Um, I think we all have books uh, or a box or something that you can use to raise the height of your, um, of, of their camera so that they're eye level. Um, and then um, again, the sound, uh, the sound would be a little bit better if you raise the, the, the computer up because you're bringing the, the microphone higher, which is closer to their mouth. So that's an added bonus. And the other thing is when you raise the camera up, you're not getting the ceiling. Like if you see the person's ceiling, you're probably shooting too low. In fact, you will be. And if you see a ceiling light on in the background, uh, backlighting like that generally is not your friend. And what I would do is I just say, do you mind just, can you just turn off the overhead? Is, is that a problem? Um, and they'll say probably, no, that would be fine. Um, okay, so um, when you're doing your interviews, one of the things that I found very helpful is to um, have a list of prepared questions. Um, the setup is, 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 it, is, it, is it a challenge to set things up? Uh, of course it is, right? But once you get set up, you're good to go. But then in some ways, the, the hardest part is actually um, your, uh, I'm just pulling some stuff here on my computer. Uh, the hardest part in some ways is actually, actually doing the interview, right? And um, the reason I think it's so difficult is because um, you, you, it's the unvariable. You don't know what they're saying. I can completely control the lighting. And it's, it's all good. Like it's, it's really good. But um, let me just pull up this sheet. I'm gonna pause this for one second. I'm gonna pull up my, my tip sheet for interviews. 
Um, all right. Before I actually move to the uh, the interview section, uh, I guess I would like just to finish up by saying um, uh, something that's very, very important when you're doing news interviews. It's very important that you're consistent. So whatever lighting you pick for one person should be the same for all. I know it's much harder on Zoom because you don't have the same control, but um, I don't want that to get lost in all of this. If you have a fairly even lighting for, for one person, it has to be the same. You can't then go very dramatic for someone else. So let's say the person that you think is the is maybe a negative character in your in your story, maybe a landlord who's evicting people or something, something bad, right? So they're darkly lit and maybe use a blue color so their skin tone looks uh, you know sickly or whatever. There's lots you can do with color uh, to change the way someone like the audience um, uh, effect or how they um, perceive the person. Um, and then they do this in movies with lighting too, right? So um, be careful of that. So do make sure that if you use the one lighting for one person, it's the same for everybody, all right? And so that actually is now mixed lighting and it looks weird. See the color uh, is mixed. Uh, so we wanna switch it back to more of a blue color. Uh, actually, that's a red color. Let's go to red. Sorry, I guess everything's backwards, that's better. Uh, yeah, so you just want to play with the light until you get kind of a match. Now, but consistency is very, very important. Um, but ultimately, with interviewing, lighting is really, it, they could look great, but then they might uh, might have bad audio, or maybe what they say is uh, is not um, is not helpful. Like you, you don't ask the right questions, and that's what interviewing is all right, and that uh, is all about, and that's about. Um, uh, asking the right questions. So uh, I'm going to stop this this video here, and then I'll do another video where we go right into the interviewing and asking questions. Um, so again, just to summarize, you need a main light, which is your key light. You need a fill light of some kind, whether it's a light you bounce off a wall or a ceiling or a foam board, right, to bounce the light in. And a backlight is very, very, very helpful, right? So uh, something on the floor, well, as I, sh I showed you here, right? Like, look at the difference that makes. It's actually, it's, it's a little bright. So let me dial it down. Again, the great remote control, but you see how I can see that little light? I just, that's all the way low. Just a little, just a little accent lighting, right? Uh, mm -hmm. If you don't like your apartment or where you live, change the lighting. It, it's really, it's really a game changer. Uh, little accent lights make all the difference. Um, you can also pick up some of the lights. This light was from the Dollarama. It was four dollars. It's just a little uh, four. It's actually like a lighting lantern, uh, like a camping lantern. But but it's wonderful for. Uh, I'll turn off the ring light. Right, it's pretty good just on its own. Right, so actually I'll show you. That's just this light. It's pretty good. Right, it's not bad at all. Right, and that's just four bucks. And there's no bulb. Like the bulb is built into it. So I had to get some batteries for it, but. For very little money, you can really kind of increase your own lighting kit so that it's uh, it's it's um, better than it was. And a backlight is helpful because it helps to separate the persons um, uh, from the background. In this case, I'm not sure I put the light up because it's going to light up the the ductwork that's above me. But what I might do is go down and then adjust my person. Can you just sit down? Can you lower your camera? It's all tilty, but you get the point, right? So now you see there's this light on the top of my head, right? I'm gonna paint the top of my hair with some light. So that's what you're doing. You're painting with light. Um, you don't want the light in the shot. That's a, that's a bad thing, generally. Uh, so, although that's not true. We, so, I mean, I, I don't like lights in the, sh in the shots that are too bright. If it's sort of a soft light in the background, you can get away with it. There's something we call a practical light where you actually see the light. Let's see, that's the lowest one there. Maybe I have a little light there. Uh, if I cover it with um, tissue, I can knock the light down even more. And the thing with light too, like if I actually tape this on, you probably wouldn't even see it because the light would kind of hide the tape. But, but you can do things to kind of improve the look of your, uh, of your background. And um, uh, if, um, if you're dealing with somebody who's willing to do some changes, even simple things. Do you mind just raising your, can you, is there any way you can bring your camera up higher? You just look better. See, you're not seeing my nostrils aren't so dominant. And then try to have them sit not too close to the camera, but medium close up. So just the armpits. And um, if they really want to look nice, you can just turn a little bit on the camera, right? So you get a bit of an angle. Um, I think that also looks nice too. Uh, so those are some lighting tips that you can use when doing an interview through Zoom or in person. All those lighting techniques apply in real life as well. So I would just offset the, um, the light 
uh, to the one side of the person just off the camera. And uh, generally when we do interviews in real life, we don't have the person look into the lens. There's something we call the subject of objective barrier. And what that is, is when I look into the lens, uh, any subjectivity you have, no objectivity, you become subjective because I'm looking at you, right? It's like uh, if you're sitting on a bus and there's a couple of people arguing across the, the way from you and you're looking at them, <laughs> this has happened to me. So you're watching with great intent. Oh, this is fascinating. And then one of them turns and looks at you and then you, you, you make eye contact with them. All of a sudden now they recognize that you're looking at them and you're no longer objective. You're now a subject. You're part of that discussion, as it were, because they're looking at you and acknowledging you. Uh, there are shows that will do that too. Uh, we call it the fourth wall in theater. So you're discussing things and they'll turn to the camera and say, hey, right? Um, and they break the fourth wall by talking to the audience directly. So um, this is a, a technique that is used um, in television and film. Uh, one of the things that you wanna try to do is, um, uh, be careful of that. We want to, uh, for journalism, you want to be, you want the person to be objective and you don't want to include them. So they're, <clears throat> you're, they're talking to the reporter, the reporter's talking to them, and that's where the discussion happens. And if the person turns and talks to the camera, what I will do is I say, just, sorry, can you just, just talk to me and then we'll, we'll put it all together. But uh, turning and talking to the camera changes things for the people uh, watching. It changes them. Uh, there's a change that happens. Um, so be careful of that. Uh, actually, I'm going to just improve my lighting since we've sort of talked about lighting. Let's just punch up some of this lighting and do this. I'm really a lighting fiend. All right. Uh, I like lighting. Uh, I think that's better. Uh, the other thing is with lighting, the more light you have, the better the resolution. And this camera, I don't really love it. Maybe I'll go to the, this, this camera here has got better resolution. Let's switch to that one. This is the one with the problem with the color. That's okay. Maybe what I'm gonna do is I will dial it blue. Uh, again, too, you just sort of have to say, oh, that doesn't look right. Let's turn on the blue lights. That's a little bit better there, I think maybe. And then maybe this ring light here, I can uh, hang up here. So uh, lighting is about trial and error. It really is fun. I, I really like lighting. And maybe you're like, uh, I think it's terrible. Uh, but lighting, you can be very creative. You can do things with it. You can use all kinds of lights because a light's a light is a light. And LED lighting is a real game changer as well. Let's see if I hang that on this hook I have in the ceiling. Oops. So yeah, so there you go. So uh, I like a little side light. So you have a, a, a main light and a backlight. How's that? Not bad. You should see, actually, you should see what, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I'm actually hanging this from the ceiling, right? Um, and then let's go back to this camera and I'm gonna turn off, because I'm using a blue light, I'm gonna actually turn off that warm light there and uh, let's, uh, let's leave the TV off for now. Okay, so interviewing, um, uh, another thing that before, so we need to talk about not looking into the lens, but for Zoom interviews, that's fine. There, it's gonna be a face-to-face. -face. Uh, you need a series of pictures when you're doing an interview, you need um, a reaction shot. So you need the person sort of sitting listening. Now, in the past, the reaction shot was somebody nodding their head. So you'd cut to the reporter, so I'm talking, and then you cut to the reporter and they're nodding their head. Actually, let me just reach into my adventure locker here. And I'm going to use this styrofoam head. Get out of here. Um, actually, here, I'll show you. So, so you're like, what are you doing? Uh, right here, I have a locker of equipment, which I call my adventure locker. And why not? You can see how packed this place is. It's sort of like a it should be an adventure lab is what I got going on here. Okay, so um, here's the, uh, this is my styrofoam head. So you have two, two people uh, talking to each other. And so when, uh, when, when one person is talking, we get a reaction shot from the other person. But, but I don't like the nod. Like sometimes people will cut and you're nodding. I don't like it because it shows agreement with what the person's saying. And if you're just using it to cover an edit or something and you're nodding and they're saying something you don't agree with, it looks awkward. Um, what I will do is a shift, right? So uh, you might have your notes in front of you. So the, the reaction shot might be, look like this, like you're, you're looking at the person and then you 
like you're looking at notes or something like that works or just sit there and listen. Yeah, I know it's awkward, but but that's just what I would do as opposed to nodding. So that gives you a shot to cut away to. Um, there's a uh, handout that you will get that uh, shows you all the different shots you need for a sit down interview. There's an over the shoulder shot where you're shooting with the, the, the other person. Uh, so here's the reporter and I'm talking to the reporter. Uh, let's see, the over the shoulder would look kind of like this, right? So they're talking and I'm talking to them. And then you do an over the shoulder of me where you get a shot of them, right? And then you get a two shot, the two of us sitting together. That, that's more of a profile, but we're talking. So you get a wide shot. Again, watch the headroom. There's too much headroom here. Oh, it's that camera. Sorry, I can't really adjust that one. It's too far away. But you get the two shot. And then for the actual interview, what I would strongly recommend is just shoot the medium close up. Just the... And if you're not sure, this shot right here is pretty good. In Premiere, I would tighten it up a little bit. Uh, watch out for things in the background, like this Pan Am uh, luggage uh, tag right there. It says Pan Am on it. There's something over here. You see that? I got that in Greece, but the person that sold it to me really couldn't tell me what it meant. I'm not sure what that word is. Um, and I'm not sure if, it was an, if there was another word in front of it. Maybe it's somebody cut it off. But that's the same marble they made the Acropolis out of. It's not from the Acropolis, but it's the same type of marble, right? Uh, and apparently that's the same marble they used in the Colosseum in Rome. It was covered in marble. So there you go. I liked it because it was marble. But it's words and it doesn't say anything. And people are like, what does that mean? Or maybe it does mean something. Maybe you know what that means. Maybe that word's, uh, you know, it's, I don't know what it means. But maybe you say, hey, why does that person... I have uh, ancient Greek uh, write, writing on their, um, on their shelf there, right? Or this book, A World Beneath the Sands, a book my son gave me on Egypt, right? So uh, words make a difference. So the way you can do is you crop it out by just turning the camera, uh, moving things around. Um, although this is, I don't think, I think it's fine. I think this stuff's not too bad. But if there's a big giant word behind you, people will notice. Let's say, okay, well, let's hear it. Let's say... You've got all of this adventure stuff, and then you've got this in the background. Oh, I don't want to knock anything over. All right. So then let's say I'm talking to you about my travels, and you're like, why on earth does that person have a Swiss rolls? Like, you see how one of the things is not like another, and it just sort of stands out, or even this white glue here, right? Right, so why is there Crayola glue on that shelf? It doesn't fit in and people notice that. And the reason I have this box is I got it from work because I had to bring something home that was fragile. So there's actually a, an artifact in here. So uh, that's why that's there. Um, but anyways, uh, so things, people will look at your, the bigger picture. They'll ask questions about it and say, you know, what's the deal with that? So setting up for an interview, you can, you get some shots before the interview. I always do it before in case the interview goes bad and they storm off, then at least you have them. So can we just do some setup shots? I just need that. You won't be doing this for a zoom interview, but in, in real life you would, and we can certainly talk about this another day, but, um, you're going to get a series of shots. And if you look at the handout uh, in Slate, you will see there is um, a whole thing on um, how to set up like technically for an interview and how to cut back and forth for an interview and what shots you need. Um, so those are things that you need to be aware of. Uh, the other thing is, and I was going to talk to you about just the, the questions. Also in Slate, I put a whole thing on interviewing tips five pages, I compiled them. So some of them I might've added to, but they're not my tips. These are resources that I pulled from other places. I've tried to cite them where uh, possible. And some of them just, I've had as resources and they were unsighted. So um, I don't really know who they are, but it talks about the types of interview and um, some of the things, be prepared. What's the purpose of the interview? What's your focus of the interview? Uh, what does the viewer need to know? And um, it, I wouldn't spend five minutes of it. If I only had five minutes with somebody, I wouldn't ask them factual information. What do you do? What's your role? Uh, that you can get from someone else. You can get that from an assistant or a coworker. What does that person do? What's their title? How long have they been here? All that factual information you can actually get outside of the interview. But what you really want from an interview are um, questions that only they can answer, right? Um, what do you, what do you, how do you feel about COVID, Dr. Gould, right? 
Uh, that's the other thing too. I am a doctor, uh, but Doc Gary is fine. Uh, but when you meet somebody, you should always use your title because you don't know. So let's say you meet me for the first time, Dr. Gould, nice to meet you. I would just say, just call me Gary, right? So then you have permission. What is worse is you've come up to me and you say, hey, Gary, I have some questions for you. And I say, it's actually Dr. Gould. Then it's really embarrassing. And then you've already started off on the wrong foot. So um, just remember that um, it's always better to have somebody say, no, no, call me Gary. Um, and it actually makes you feel pretty good. And if they don't, it's fine too, right? I spent $100,000 on those two letters and I like to use them, right? Dr. Gould, that was $100,000 for those two letters. So, so there you go. Um, <clears throat> again, in the, uh, in the tip sheet, you, and that's something I'm, let you, I'm gonna let you read through. It talks about bad habits, overloading questions, leading questions. Uh, be careful of that. It's very much like a court case uh, in some ways. Uh, you don't want a yes or no answer. Do you like teaching here, right? Yes or no. Like it's, th those aren't helpful. We can't really use them when you're doing your edit. Uh, Dr. Gary Gould loves teaching. Yes. Like you say to me, do you like teaching? And I say, yes. When you're setting up the show, you have nothing, right? You might say, well, what do you like about teaching? Then I might say, oh, I really like, you know what I like about teaching is the students, which is actually true. I love working with students, right? Um, Good questions are open-ended, right? Questions that make people think and not simply react, right? So not just a yes or no question, more open-ended. Tell me the things about, tell me about, you know, how do you, uh, how do you like this or a bit more? Um, so closed-ended question, do you like teaching? Is a closed-ended question. What do you like about teaching is a very open question. And it gives me more room to, um, to go somewhere. Uh, uh, politicians are notorious for taking open-ended questions and taking them wherever they want. Uh, you know, what do you like about teaching? And then I say, well, actually my party really, uh, you know, they quickly go on to this, this other message that they wanna be um, kind of uh, talking about. So um, you might also have to come back. You should also listen. It's very important to be an active listener to what the person says where uh, you ask them, like maybe they answer the question and then they didn't answer it. They just give you some words and you say, well, okay, uh, let me ask it another way. Um, you know, you've been, you know, or, or just ask it again, right? That's great, but you didn't answer the question or, or can you tell me what you actually like about teaching, right? Push them on the point. Um, simple questions are easier than complex questions. Uh, don't double, uh, double end your, or double barrel your questions where there's two questions. Tell me about what do you like about teaching and what do you like about our campus or whatever, right? Those are two questions. And what will happen is the person will pick the question they want to talk about the most and they'll ignore the other questions. Politicians, again, are good at this, right? Why did you do this? And then they just skip the why. They just go to the, oh, well, our government's really committed to this. And they've really not answered uh, the first question. So only ask one question at a time. You also might find you have to cut people off if they go on too long. And uh, when I set up an interview, generally, I will pre-say to people at the beginning, you know, uh, because if we got to keep this to time, I may have to cut you uh, cut you short. Please don't be offended by that. But I need to have the, uh, I want to keep the interview moving. And so in order to do that, I might just jump in and say, uh, I'm okay, like, just cut in, right? Uh, in a polite way. And say, okay, now going back to that other point, like, just keep it moving. And the other thing with listening is you're listening to their answers. I have been mortified when I've heard some interviews where people are clearly not asking or not listening, <laughs> where somebody will answer a question and then somebody says, they'll, they'll say, what do you like about teaching? And the person literally says, I literally just told you, right? You're clearly not listening. Because the problem is people are looking down at their notes and they're thinking, oh, you know what? Uh, clipboards are great, but you're looking down at your notes um, and not paying attention. Listen, I'm all for digital. I don't mind digital as well as the, as the next person. Maybe you have an iPad or whatever, and that's fine. But one thing with uh, clipboards, the battery never runs out. The phone call never comes in. The screen doesn't go to sleep. You know, it's much more reliable. Um, and whatever you're using, whether you're using a phone or a tablet or, or, or something else, uh, hold your questions up. Right. So if my questions are down here, when I what I've got on the camera, certainly for the Zoom interviews, you're looking down here. Um, if they're up in front of you right here. Right. Uh, it's much better. Um, I uh, had an embarrassing moment. I was on TVO Kids doing my um, my talk and I had put the questions or they, I had knew what the questions were. So I had the answers on a piece of paper, not on a clipboard, just a loose piece of paper on my keyboard. We go live on air. 
and they asked me a question. So I reach down to um, look at this piece of paper. My finger hits the touchpad of my computer or my laptop, and it turns off my camera because the mouse was hovering on stop camera. So right live, I go off camera. Keep going. Don't relax. Don't don't get nervous. What can I do? So I'm like, oh, what happened there? Did my Zoom crash? Took me a second to realize I did that. So I turn my camera back on and just keep talking. Um, and that's just how it is. It's all it's all fine. It's just technology. Uh, but but having questions written down is helpful. And then again, a clipboard or device. Um, I just think maybe a clipboard looks a little better. But maybe that's because I'm old school. Uh, which doesn't mean I'm old, but I just I just love clipboards. Super reliable, right? Well, tell me about this, right? But again, just hold it out of the frame. So I wouldn't hold it up in the frame, know where your frame is. And again, that's another reason I like a medium close-up shot is that a tighter shot means I can actually hold my notes in front of me and my eye line is better to the camera. That's also true for a stand-up, by the way, if I'm holding my notes. Uh, the other thing that I find about a computer screen or a, la sorry, a camera screen is they're typically very, it's hard to read, it's very small, or you're, you're trying to you know, do one of these and find your next question. Whereas if you've written them out, you get them all here in front of you. But I don't know, try it, maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Uh, neutral question is very important. Keep your opinion out of it. And again, keep things active, right? Um, don't, you know, don't start with tell me about yourself. Just, just go right into it it's because you only have a certain amount of questions to, to ask the person. If you have a question that's a bit sharp that you think they might kind of jump back on, push that. Don't do that. Don't start with that. Cause if you, you get something, get them going, warm them up and then come to that question. And again, if people don't answer the questions, kind of circle back. Um, some good questions is like, what happened? What happened then? Or what happened next? Or tell me about, right? Uh, what went through your mind is another good one, right? What were you thinking? All of this is in that tip, that the, the tip sheet on, on Slate, but uh, read through that. Uh, what do you mean by that, right? So listen, and don't be afraid to go off, off your list of questions. Let's say somebody says something and you genuinely have a, a question that is uh, in response to that, then say, wow, how did that happen? Or, or what happened next? Like, what were you thinking? What's your favorite story? What changed? How did that happen? How, you know, um, uh, like, uh, you know, how do you rate your chances of something? Or, you know, what do you think your chances are of winning? Or um, how will that affect you, right? Like, <clears throat> make it very active. Uh, and sometimes, too, silence can be, well, not sometimes, often silence is very powerful, right? You just listen. So I might say, well, you know, tell me about, tell me what happened. Right, and the person stops, and I'm still listening, and they continue. And sometimes, when you hit silence, they feel like they have to keep talking because you stop and you're silent, so they think they should keep talking. So sometimes that's that's really very effective in in live interviewing. Leaning forward, listening, looking eye contact is very important with the person. Uh, on camera is a little tougher. Uh, it really is. Um, it's really, really tough, but be engaged a little prompt, you know, like really that, that, that was, you know, uh, is that so wow. Right. Like little things like that are not another question. They're just little, little prompts to, for them to keep going and shows that you're engaged. Uh, again, um, read through the, the tip sheets, uh, listening, super important, be in control. Don't let them go off for five. If you have a five minute interview, 10 minutes, don't let them ramble on for 10 minutes. It's very hard to edit an interview. And a Zoom interview is really tough too, because um, the shots, you don't have a lot of shots to, to cut back and forth, but do record a, a silent shot. Um, and um, so they're just sitting, right, listening shot of you sitting and listening. And um, what you're gonna find is when you do it like that, it's actually, it actually works pretty well because um, uh, you can actually you jump, you can, you can cut to those shots um, when you need them. Again, not ideal, in person is way better. Um, down the road, we're gonna be doing another, like we'll look at another interview type where we actually pretend they're in the room. So we're, where the head direction is better. But for this one, uh, just do your best aim talking to the camera. Also to the sound. Again, we'll talk about sound. I know you have a microphone. If you figured that out, then use that. If it works with your laptop, then use that. That would be best. If you can just plug into your laptop and record the sound that way. Uh, and so what's going to happen is um, both of you are going to, you and your partner are going to record. No, you are going to record. 
uh, so if it's my interview, I'm going to record both both ends. Um, uh, I like recording that to, uh, to my local drive. I found when I put it in the cloud, it, it compresses it more and the quality isn't as good. So do, if you can record it to your local computer, which means you wanna make sure there's enough space on your computer. Um, it's 25% of your camera grade. So it's quite significant. Um, I will say this about it. If you're having trouble or it doesn't work out, don't sweat it, we'll figure it out. Even if we have to uh, have you go back and redo it. Um, you are welcome to find a partner in the class. Um, or if you want to reach out and interview somebody else, you're welcome to do that. In some ways, finding a classmate is probably easier. Well, it's not some ways. It generally is quite easy because then they can light themselves up and look good. And you can light yourself up and look good as well. But you see that, see how the lighting is? It's pretty good, right? So I kind of like this, right? I got the same color, both sides. Uh, this light's a bit smaller. It's not as powerful as my main light, but it's quite comfortable, I think, right? Uh, some shadows on my face and no ring light in my glasses on the very edge, but not right over my eyeball. Um, so uh, you have the sheet uh, in Slate as well. You have the, uh, the interview assignment. It's a shared assignment with the um, editing class. Uh, the footage is due at the start of the editing class on November the 2nd, and the final submission is due November the 9th um, at the end of the day. Uh, all the instructions are in your um, in slate under the assignment. It's the same paper you would have got in Victoria's class and, and there's details on what you need for the edit. And then there's also how to set up your Zoom. So if you've never used Zoom before, uh, Zoom is, um, if you've never run a meeting in Zoom before, it's pretty straightforward. There's some notes there. Uh, you put the Zoom app on your computer and you launch it. And then you just say, start meeting. Um, if you have struggles with that, um, you can either Google that. That's, there's lots of help online with Zoom, but I'm also happy to help you. But you might just be fine, that might find it quicker just saying, how do I set up this? Um, at the bottom of your screen, uh, I don't think I can share my screen. Um, I wonder if I can share my Zoom screen. Well, let's see if I share that. No, that's not what we want. You get to see all my notes. That's not what I want. So at the bottom of Zoom, uh, these are the important things to look at. If you go down to the bottom, the thing I keep doing is I keep changing the camera. So next to the video, there's a button that says stop video. There's a little camera and there's a little chevron, a little arrow. And if you click on that, you'll see select a camera. Uh, you can choose your virtual background there. For this assignment, please do not use a virtual background. Please do not, all right? What I want you to do is to use a real background like this one and light it up. Um, just do your best with it. So don't use any video filters. If you go down to the very bottom in, so you're going next to stop video, there's a little camera, there's a chevron, you're clicking, you're cl let's just do it again. So there's a little arrow, I'm gonna click on that. Oops, I stopped my video. That's not what I wanna do. Ah, oh, come on, start video. There it is. <laughs> The arrow up, drop down menu opens up, video settings. And in video settings, if you look, it shows you which camera you're selecting. And then there is a button that says HD. Make sure that is checked so that if your camera is HD, you get the better quality. Uh, very, very important, HD. Uh, and then the sound as well. Make sure the sound, just try to get as close to your camera as you can, or your microphone as you can. And then up at the top, there's an area that says view. What is that? My top right, you see that view and there's a bunch of cubes. Click on that. You can do that right now. Make sure you're in speaker view. This is very, very important, speaker view. Uh, if you're in gallery view, you're gonna get the, the two squares. If you're in speaker view, you should get a picture that's full screen. So make sure it's very important, speaker view up in that, this corner for me. So, oh, view, look at that, click on that speaker view is what I want. And, uh, and then there's a record button on the bottom uh, of my screen right about here. Um, and uh, click record. And then do you want to record to the cloud or to your computer, select your computer. Um, you're going to have to share the file. So if two of you are interviewing, what I would suggest is if I'm interviewing uh, you, I'll record the first uh, interview using uh, the record button. And then when you get time to do your interview, so it's your turn, 
you record it. So I'll stop it when I'm finished me, and then you start recording. You might say, hey, doc, I do that, but there's no record button on the bottom. You might need to make the person a co-host. If you look at the bottom, you see participants, and there's an arrow. If you click on the participants button, it says, or just click on participants, you'll see the person and it'll say host or whatever. You can actually make the other person a co-host so they can record. And worst case, you just record it for both of you and then just send them the file. So like record one, stop it, then record the second one and send it. So make sure there's two different recordings, put them on your local computer because you will find that the quality is actually better. All right, so um, don't put the person in front of a window. Uh, use natural light if you want, that's fine. Uh, but you don't want it side lighting. You want the light to come towards their face, but not directly towards their face, just a little offset. You can see both my lights are off to the side. No virtual background, super important. And the other thing we're gonna do just to pretend is you're gonna put the reporter on the left side of the screen following the rule of thirds and the subject or your guest on the right side of the screen. So again, following the rule of thirds. So I would be more like this. Now you're gonna look into the, to, to the camera. Later on, we'll talk about turning. So you're looking off the camera that it looks actually better. We'll show you some examples, but for this one, just for now, even though you're looking into the camera, you got to offset. So, um, so I'm on this side and then the other person in their camera will be looking this way. Does that make sense? So they're looking with the open site here. The background, of course, would be different. And uh, in my screen, I'm looking this way, like I'm off to the one side. So offset it. There's some examples in the, in the handout showing you where to place your subject, but please make sure you do follow those uh, steps. One, two, three, four, five. And um, <laughs> listen, I appreciate how hard it is. There's lots of checks, uh, box to checks, keep it eye line. You should pause when you're speaking because you don't want to talk over somebody. Uh, that's actually true. Ask your question. Let them finish. Uh, which camera's on? I'm looking at the wrong camera. That one up there. Um, uh, try to record for under 30 minutes of recording since uh, when you are a Zoom guest, uh, you only have a 40-minute Zoom call. That's the most you can get out of Zoom before it kicks you off. Uh, the reason Zoom calls for Victoria and I go longer is because the school pays for a Zoom account which is, um, I don't know, unlimited time. So um, yeah, that's it. Uh, also don't stop the recording too fast after they finish talking to you, give them a second or two and then click on that. There's all sorts of Zoom resources down at the bottom. Uh, if you're not sure, send me a note again or just Google Zoom help for this. Why can't I do this? Where is the, this button? So again, you're going into camera settings at the bottom. Uh, there's a little thing that says uh, camera settings. Um, so, well, actually it says stop video next to it. There's a little arrow, you click on that. Go to the bottom, video settings, make sure HD is checked on. Huge difference, huge difference. Uh, do your best with lighting. The focus will not uh, really be on, it's not on lighting or sound on this one. It's more about trying to do the edit. Uh, ask good questions, open-ended, not yes or no questions. That's very, very important as well. And then the, the other thing we've talked about before and we'll talk about again is the axis of interaction. And this is very important. Normally when you're doing an interview, you're gonna set your subject up. So you have me and I have my subject, right? And then um, uh, you're gonna, I'm looking this way and my subject's looking this way. What you wanna do is all of the shots stay on this side. The axis is between our nose. So all of the shots, you can go over the shoulder, you can go over my shoulder, you can get them looking this, this way, right? So their nose should always be looking this way and my nose should always be looking this way. If you break the axis, you'll cut and we'll jump sides. And that's something that um, you will be penalized with uh, for. That's why you want to make sure when we set stuff, uh, one person's on one side, the other person's on the other and it will cut together. Some of this will make sense only once you start doing it. The axis is a tough thing, but you pick the, so right now there's no axis because I'm on the line. If I look this way, I've now established that I'm looking this, the screen direction, I'm looking this way. If I turn the other way, the screen direction is now this way, right? And you wanna make sure you maintain that. Uh, so again, we'll talk more about that again. This is more for in-person stuff, shooting with the axis, but it is something that we are aware of, especially when you're shooting an interview, because if you get it wrong, you have, it looks like both people are looking the exact same way. So I'm, you cut me and I'm looking this way and then you cut my subject and they're looking this way and it looks really weird and awkward. 
All right, I think that's as long as we should go today. Um, thank you again for your patience. I hope that made sense. Uh, lighting is a critical part of what we do. We're gonna talk more and more about it. Um, and the reason I wanna introduce the idea of lighting now is because uh, it really doesn't take much to, to have a pretty good setup, right? So uh, the ring light, as I said, I don't even have a second stand for this one. I just got it hanging on a hook from the ceiling. Uh, don't, don't put a hook in your, in your, in your parents' ceiling uh, or your, wherever you live in your apartment just to hang something on it. But um, again, read through the, the, the handout. It's very detailed. Re-ask and reaction. Uh, I did mention the reaction. That's like um, an expression, like you're turning, um, don't overact, right? Just like subtle, look down, look up, just something like that. And then the re-ask is the last thing I want to mention to you. And that's when you re-ask the questions. The reason it's nice to have questions written out is so that uh, the way we would do the interview is, um, this is how I would typically do a one-person interview. Um, I set the camera up. I do the, the wide shot, the over the shoulder, like the two shot at the beginning. And then I have my subject set up. And you're going to ask me all the questions from here. Okay, and then we're done. So I, you've asked me, it's just on me. That's how we shoot it. Then once we're finished, uh, I can actually leave. You reposition the camera to face the other way. And then, so we, the, this is background's gone and now you're looking the other way and you see the reporter and the reporter then re-asks all the questions. You know, What do you like about teaching online? Or how do you feel about teaching online, right? Actually see the difference. What do you like about online implies that I like it. What don't you like about online implies I don't. A neutral question is more like, uh, you know, what, what are your thoughts about online teaching? Dead neutral. I could go negative. I can go positive, right? Maybe I'll do both, but then I'm, I have more latitude. So that's the pro-level thinking as a reporter. Uh, pro-level, and the other thing is, some of it starts, like if somebody comes into the room and they say, wow, look at these lights you've got set up. How great, look how great I look. Who doesn't want to look great on camera? I would say to people, look, I know this has taken a few minutes, but we want you to look fabulous, right? Ring lights are nice, soft, diffused lighting. We'll talk more about lighting another day in terms of hard and soft lighting, but in color. But you need to start to think, okay, oh, it doesn't quite look right. Oh, it's because they're different colors. I remember, match the colors up, right? Um, and put one over here and one over here. And don't get sucked into the fact that just because there's a, a mount in the middle of that ring light doesn't mean that's where you should put the camera right? Because you can already see, I think it looks better uh, off to the side. And if you only have one light, right? Okay. It's a bit more dramatic. You can use the bounce to fill in the shadow. And, and if you are using a battery operated light, which is what I believe you have, one of the lights is battery operated, make sure it's charged. Um, and I don't know if there's a cord where you can plug it in, but if there is, you might want to run it off of power because if it, the light gets slowly dimmer over time, what will happen, let's say the light's getting dimmer and dimmer because it's losing power. Um, when you go to edit it, especially if your reaction shots were from the beginning, it will look really weird because you'll cut it in the middle and the light will be less. So be careful of that. Um, so reactions are good. Um, yeah, I think that's probably it. Uh, let me just double check that we've covered everything. So lighting, I spent a lot of time on lighting only because again, it's something that's critical to making your stuff stand out from the rest of the of everybody and if you're working with a partner from the class then they have the same lights that you do and you can kind of work together to make it look pretty nice uh yeah you know what i understand that most backgrounds like you're not going to have a a zoom background like oh come on there it is like it's not going to be you know you can't dial up the light like i've got all kinds of lights to kind of bring up the background a little bit warm them up but you can play with that get some, get a desk lamp and or like a table lamp and put it on the floor so you have like a kind of a glow as long as it doesn't look ridiculous and if you have to spend a couple of dollars on bulbs you're going to use them anyways right for sure 100 percent. like at some point uh, a light's going to burn out and the led bulbs are good right because they will run less power for you all right Okay, so let me just make sure I've covered everything I want to cover in this class. And uh, again, I appreciate your understanding. Uh, on our list of things to do this week, depth of field is on there. I'm going to push that to another uh, week. Um, access of interaction, we will talk about again. Uh, shot mix consideration, uh, we'll talk more about that again. That's, that's not really an interview type um, situation. That's more uh when i'm telling a story i'm doing a visual story and i'll talk to you about that more so um 
I think that's it for this week. Uh, thank you again for doing this. Uh, I hope this format worked for you. Uh, I felt by doing it this way, it gave people more time to do the test. They can do the test on their own. There's no pressure and the rest of you can move through on your own time and uh, your own schedule and then have, uh, if you're done early, you're done early. Actually, I think you might be done a little bit early, but it depends on how long it took you to do the test. Uh, if you have questions, please send me an email. I will respond to them as quickly as I can. Um, and yeah, so that's it. So the B-roll assignment is what you should be working on now. Um, and if you owe me some other things from other times, uh, again, we don't want you to fall behind because um, we're, uh, this is a shared assignment um, like the last one was a shared assignment. So the sequence was shared and this one's shared and you need to get this footage done so this is week six. You need to get it interview seek, um, footage by November, the week of November first, the week of November first, right? And you need that for Victoria's editing class. All right. So um, I guess that's it. I uh, hope that helps. Again, thanks for paying attention and sticking with me uh, with all the technical problems. And that's the other thing you just realize is the tech stuff is part of it. And if you understand the tech stuff couple of lights, right? And making it easy. I wear a light vest so I don't blend into the background. See how I stand out against the black, right? Little things like that. Um, bit of, you know, the color shirt I wear, I don't like to wear something too dark, nothing too bright. Uh, makes a big difference. And anything, even a, even a flashlight from the dollar store can, can be used to, you know, punch up the background a little bit, right? You just move things around. You got it. You maybe have a camping light somewhere, or a lantern, have some fun with it. It gives you a chance to be creative uh, because you're painting with light. So that's it. So if you have questions, um, please send them to me. Uh, or if you want to have a Zoom meeting, uh, I'm happy to set that up with you. And if you have questions about cameras or whatever. And one of the things that uh, with depth of field, uh, that's a struggle is because um, if you're shooting with a smartphone, it's much harder to control uh, depth of field if you don't have uh, iris or aperture control, which is the case with the iPhone. So we'll get there. Anyways, have a great week. Um, happy Thanksgiving. Thanks again. I hope this worked and we'll see you again. Uh, please feel free to email me again. Uh, happy to meet with you by Zoom if that's preferable. Thanks again and have a great night.